What is going on guys, Joel here back with another one and as Apple's yearly worldwide developers conference event is approaching in about a month on June 22nd, which means they'll be unveiling the new iOS 14. So they will have a beta release, which for sure I'll be covering on the channel. So I figured we'll start a little early with some iOS coverage and cover the latest update that Apple released, which is iOS 13.5. Now this update should be available for everybody that is running 13.4.1. Simply go into settings, general, then software update, and you can go ahead and update. Now this has some notable features and updates that you should know about, so let's go ahead and check them out. First off is the new feature Apple has added to iOS 13.5 for those who have devices with Face ID. With many wearing face masks during this pandemic, it sometimes is time consuming when you're just trying to unlock your device as it cannot detect your face because you have a mask on. With this new feature, it simplifies the unlock process and the passcode field will automatically present itself after swiping up from the bottom of the lock screen when wearing a face mask. This definitely speeds things up when you're just trying to unlock your phone. So I'm glad Apple has implemented this type of feature. This also works when authenticating with the App Store, Apple Pay, iTunes, and other apps that support signing in with Face ID. So with iOS 13.5, there is also a new exposure notification API that is in collaboration with both Apple and Google to help bring awareness if you've been in contact with someone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. It's great to see that Apple and Google has collaborated on something like this. Currently it is inactive because there has not been an app that uses this new exposure notification API. But once there is an app, you will be able to enable exposure logging that is found in the privacy section of the settings app. Here it goes into more detail of how exposure notification works, which in short, it uses Bluetooth and exchanges random IDs with other devices and then it collects all those random IDs from the other devices it's collected and stores it in a log for 14 days. Now then that exposure log allows an app you have authorized to notify you if you may have been exposed to COVID-19. Also, if you have been diagnosed with COVID-19, you can choose to share your own device's random IDs with the authorized app so it can notify others anonymously. So you can read more about it here in the COVID-19 exposure logging section and then learn more link. But this API will definitely be helpful not only for iPhone users, but also Android because it'll work for both platforms as it'll be able to receive the random IDs from Android devices as well. I think this is definitely big, not only because Apple and Google have collaborated together, but during this pandemic, it's also good to know if you've been in contact with someone who has COVID or has had COVID-19 in the past. Now, both Apple and Google will embed this type of feature into their operating systems in the future, but for now, it is something that you have to use an app for, but currently there is no app available because there hasn't been one developed yet. But what do you think about this feature? It's definitely useful, definitely needed, and glad it's now on iOS. Now, another new feature in 13.5 is for FaceTime. If you've ever done group FaceTime calls, especially right now during the pandemic, you're probably aware when a person is talking, their tile will get larger to notify you that that person is currently speaking. Now, there's a new feature under FaceTime in the settings app that lets you enable or disable this feature. So where it says automatic prominence, you can now disable it. So now the tile when someone is speaking won't get larger anymore. It just stays the same like all the other tiles. Moving on to another updated feature is for emergency services. So now you can choose to automatically share your health and other essential information from your medical ID with emergency services when you place an emergency call or text. This can definitely be useful to help emergency services with various information like your primary language, any allergies or reactions, and medical conditions as you can state all of this under your medical ID. Now this information can be shared through your iPhone or Apple Watch, so whichever device you call emergency services with, it is able to notify the emergency services with the information you've placed under that medical ID. Currently it is only available in the United States, but overall I do think it's a nice added feature. Now another added feature is for those who use Apple Music and Instagram Stories. Now, when you're listening to a song on Apple Music, you can go to the share sheet and now Instagram is a place where you can share that song too. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't share the actual song clip or any audio, but instead it shows the album artwork and the song you're listening to with a nice little background that's matching the album artwork. But there is a direct link that you can click on on the top left and it will send you over to Apple Music and directly to that song so you can start listening to it. Now these are the main new updates for iOS 13.5, but it also includes some bug fixes and other improvements such as fixing an issue where users may have been seeing a black screen when trying to stream some video from some websites. It also addresses an issue in the share sheet where suggestions and actions may not load. But what are your thoughts on the new updates and changes for iOS 13? I know for sure the simplified unlock process when using Face ID and you have a mask on is going to be super useful. Definitely cuts back down in time. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, do you enjoy short videos like this? Just showing you the latest changes to iOS and maybe we can do some news updates. I'm trying to get some ideas of how I can bring you guys some more content on a regular basis like it used to be. So let me know your thoughts down below. Expect more videos like we always do on the channel that covers the updates for iOS 14 betas when that is released in late June. Also some big news is for those that are into jailbreaking, you'd be happy to know there should soon be a jailbreak available because some well-known jailbreak developers released a big tweet saying there will be a jailbreak for iOS 13.5. So if you are into jailbreaking, updating to this latest version of iOS, shouldn't stop you from jailbreaking. Just thought I'd throw that in there and who knows, maybe we'll start some jailbreak coverage once again on the channel. But as always, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video as, as it not only lets me know that you liked it, but it also shows support to the channel. Also, if you're not following on social media like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and things like that, I'll leave those down below in the description that we can stay up to date with what is going on. And lastly, if you feel like being awesome, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. That way you're always notified and don't miss out when I drop my next video. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I appreciate your support very much. But other than that, I will catch you all on the next one. All right. Peace.